What is up, brothers and sisters? Welcome to the Mitch Grace Show. Yes, I say it every single time, and I'm going to say it again. We have another awesome episode for you today. Meeting all these wonderful people um, the last couple of months all over the world, and I just keep inviting them on the show, and they keep saying yes, and so it's fabulous. So we hope you have as much fun listening and watching as we do um, chatting about all the cool things in life. Today, I have a uh, a gentleman who has become a dear friend in life, and I have a feeling over the next awesome, uh, awesome season, we're going to become even closer. Mr. Ryan Christopher, welcome to the Mitch Gray Show, man. Hey, glad to be here. Yes, and I am glad for you to be here too. Uh, Ryan, we're going to get into the depths of your uh, experience and bio in a little bit. You're the CSO and part owner of Anything on Anything quad meets founder we'll dig into that deeper but i know you love to show people your nuts and just tell us right now what does that even mean i know right it's it's kind of funny i always get to talk about my nuts or show my nuts on screen and people are like what is the where is this going uh but really this is what it is and for those of you who are listening because we're in the printing business our business card is not your typical business card it's an actual walnut and so we print our logo on one side of the walnut and on the other side of the walnut we actually have all of our contact information and so it's really designed to create what we call a fun unique customer experience or journey when you're wanting to have a nice introduction and that way they remember you and they remember you forever sometimes they poke a little fun at it but hey you know what at the end of the day it works to hand out my nuts Look, man, I've seen a lot of really creative business cards in the past. Never someone showing me their nuts. And so, <laughs> yeah, kudos to you for uh, creating something that's definitely memorable. And for those of you listening via audio, please go to the YouTube page, Mitch Gray Media, and look up this episode and just take a second to watch Ryan show you his one walnut today. That's all you get is one, okay? And thank you for not being uh, arrested for indecent exposure. That's, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it is. But I, I got to tell you, you know, when, when you think creatively and a little bit out of side the box, I mean, everything is just, you, you just got to create a fun uh, way to remember. And that's just one thing that works for us. We have other things that we hand out to, but you know, obviously having a printed walnut demonstrates the capabilities of what we can do at anything on anything. I mean, it kind of it just is what it is, right? But it yeah. does create a fun dialogue as well. It, best thing is, is it lowers that barrier down that people have when you go talk to them. Yeah, you're literally affirming anything on anything with printed Walmarts. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a plan. You know, that's what we try to do. Yeah. So tell us, how's, how's life, man? How's uh, business? It's kind of an interesting season and uh, you, you've got a couple of great things happening more than that, but a couple that we're definitely going to talk about today. Um, so how, how are things during this pandemic for uh, a small business owner, someone trying to grow your business? Um, what, what do things look like? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting as we reflect on COVID and the impact it has had on businesses, right? And one thing I will tell you, there are some businesses that just got hammered. Mm -hmm. you no, know, we know who those are, hospitality, travel, um, I mean, anything that has to do with events. And interestingly enough, that actually dovetails into our industry. And so just in the industry of promotional printing and products, I mean, let's face it, when was the last time you got a handed out swag item from a company? Or when did you go to a trade show and you're visiting all these booths and you're getting pens and notebooks or whatever else you get at trade shows? I mean, it's just not happening this year. And so our industry historically year over year has been on a huge growth curve, um, somewhere around 5% to 7% year over year growth in a $22 billion industry. And that's a big number for growth. This year, we're looking at probably 50% decrease year over year as a whole in the industry. So it has been a real challenge for anybody in promotional printing um, unlike businesses that are like, you know, in the trades, people who are building houses or working on homes, all the remodeling, landscaping, anybody who's really in the trades right now is booming. Financial industry, booming. You know, banking, mortgages, booming. Um, and so it's really interesting to kind of sit back and look and see who are, who are the companies buying products from us? Mm -hmm. 
know that those are industries doing well. And then the ones that used to buy products from us, well, they're not doing so hot. So it's been pretty interesting this year. Yeah. Was there any pivot, especially for the, the promotional um, industry? Was there any creative type pivot, kind of focus type pivot that you had to make pretty immediately to make up yeah. for some of that loss? You know, we, we tried to pivot in a lot of different ways. And, you know, just to be candid, and through some of that pivoting, we thought in theory some things had really good substance to it, that it was going to make sense and help. But the reality of it is, is it just didn't work. Yeah. And so instead of just sitting back and thinking, okay, what are we going to do? My wife and I have been really putting on our caps and saying, okay, how can we continue to pivot? How can we continue to reinvent ourselves? Not losing the core aspect of our business because that is going to bounce back at some point in time. But what are some things? So one of the things I, I ended up doing was I created this uh, concept or you can call it a concept or whatever, a business in the box. And the thought process was, is that people were going to be wanting to start businesses due to those who had lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, that was big in 2008. Businesses were going out, people were moving into corporate America, but then as those people were losing their jobs and they couldn't find work, they're actually spinning off and creating new businesses as well. And any business, if they're going out and starting up, is always going to be thinking about branding and logo and swag items like t-shirts and stuff. So we put together this package to basically say, here's three packages you could buy in at to get fully branded, to be able to put yourself in a better position to start a business. But it just didn't grow any legs. Like we just, we couldn't get any traction behind it. Great idea, great concept, right? It kind of fits the mold of everything that's going on, but it just didn't grow, have any legs to it. So you kind of go, oh man, I was really hoping this was going to work. And eh, you know what? It did. So what do you do? <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. What, what do you do? Well, you got to try something else. Um, so, but I, you did ask, so I want to jump in. You did ask, what's one thing that we uh, have found out potentially that is working in with everything moving to, you know, this virtual world mm -hmm. uh, in particular, like now there's, there's actual businesses where they're setting up like this video game structure to where you can actually experience a trade show, even though you're not at a trade show, right. And still right. You're just doing it from your computer screen. And so um, we, we have what we call, there's probably a bunch of other names for it, but, it's basically an experience kit, a customer experience kit. And this is kind of an example of it. It's a printed box, right? And then on the inside of the box, we can stuff it with all sorts of branded swag items. So then as you're having an event, or maybe you're wanting to reach out to a prospect, or you want to thank a customer because you can't go visit them, get an experience kit where you throw a bunch of branded swag items that are tools and then send that out and then now they can at least have an experience of your business in their home uh, if they're not letting people in. And so we've gotten some traction with that because that really does make a lot of sense from a branding perspective. Yeah, I love that idea. And, and you do, you see, um, just even over the last week, I've seen a few conferences, uh, a few companies who normally lead some conferences who kind of just like all of us when this happened, you know, in, in the U.S. in March, everything just kind of dropped and it was like everyone was paralyzed. It's like we all took a shot of, you know, something in the arm and it, and it stagnated everything. And now it's almost like companies and, and entrepreneurs are kind of going, OK, we can start coming back to the normal that we can meet right now. And, and so then you see the response to that or things like what you're doing. I had another friend that's in the, in the promotion business and they own, uh, she's a part of a company called Swag Up. And it's crazy because in the middle of this pandemic, they grew so much, they had to buy a brand new warehouse <laughs> to house all of what they're doing. But again, a lot of the same stories that you're telling were some similar things that they had to go through as well. And it's just a listen and respond, listen to what's right. happening in the marketplace and respond. And Early on in this, I told a business leader, I said, here's the deal. Innovators are going to thrive when all this is done. The traditionalists are going to die off because you can't survive functioning the way you did before all of this. And so it's exactly what you're saying. Have an idea, try it. Doesn't work, got to move quick. Let's, let's try something. Yeah, else. Just, just keep trying, you know. 
Um, but you bring up a good point. I mean, there are businesses in our industry that are doing well and what they have done a good job at is pivoting into selling uh, PPE, you know, like branded face masks and yeah. hand sanitizer and all that. Um, we've always been really, really cautious as we went back and heard from some other business owners and stuff. And really there was so much uncertainty and there were all these reports that we had been seeing in terms of like hand sanitizers. There was a report that came out that, that there were 50 manufacturers of hand sanitizers that actually had banned substances that, uh, by the FDA as they were coming into the United States. Well, that has a lot of implications, right? I mean, people were trying to just whip out hand sanitizer and literally we saw the price increase go up five, six, seven, eight times of what it was back in February when we actually made a purchase for a customer before all this even happened. I mean, the hand sanitizers went literally from about 42 to 48 cents a piece to you know, $2.50 to $3 a piece, which is just crazy when you think about it. And then in terms of the, the masks uh, that were out there, um, we literally saw videos of the conditions that a lot of these masks were being made. And my wife and I really just looked back and we were just like, I don't think we can get behind this. There's just so much unknown. There's so much uncertainty. Um, there's the, the businesses that were trying to pivot and get into the PPE and selling it. Uh, and their facilities and their warehouses and the products always changing and this ebb and flow. And then it was like, oh, we can get these products in two weeks. Well, then they would be eight weeks and 12 weeks and 16 mm -hmm. weeks. And a lot of businesses in the industry were just complaining about how they, the, the, the manufacturers were not adjusting to the demands that were out there. So there was this huge like hiccup that happened in, in PPE as it relates to branding those items um, and so it was, that was just one area we, we consciously just made a decision of, you know what, we could pivot and go that direction, but there's so many people already doing it. Do we just want to follow the crowd or do we want to try something and be market leaders in something else? Yeah. And really it's not going to be sustainable. That specific of a product is going to run its course at some point. And so to see the companies that totally pivot and put their effort into that, guess what they're going to be doing in six to eight months again. <laughs> right. Gonna, they got to reinvent themselves again. Exactly. And so, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe for the companies that added something like that as an addition to, and are able to, to deal with that. But I've seen a ton of companies that have, they're like, this is where the money pit is. This is where we're going to go. Well, fine, but you're going to spend more money pivoting again then you probably reaped in return for the right. first of it, you know? And so, but, but that also kind of relates a little bit. You alluded to it some, it kind of relates to, a, you know, every, every person in business has a moral clause within that culture, within what they're going to live, breathe and die for. And that's almost kind of what you're alluding to in a way. It's like, we have to measure how these things are being made, what's happening, if they're even, you know, uh, if even a hand sanitizer that's supposed to basically be rubbing alcohol <laughs> is legit much. enough to sell. Yeah. And what's, what's interesting is you heard, you know, a month or so ago, there were a bunch of studies coming out that a lot of that hand sanitizer was causing harm to people. Or we didn't even have the right percentage. Yes. Yeah. Needed for it. You know, I mean, and like all that stuff was just so yeah. up in the air. I mean, it cuts you off, but like there, there was just so many unknowns and so many conflicting reports out there. It's like, do you even want to play in that space? That's exactly right. And, and that does tie to that moral clause, right? And so I kind of want to go into that a little bit, that, that, you know, you've got this business, you're trying to grow it during the pandemic, you're trying to transition, but you're still having to deal with this moral compass that says, yes, we're going to go here. No, we're not going to go there. So moving away from the company in particular, how do you arrive at a spot as an entrepreneur, as a businessman, to make the decisions possible that can keep a business going, but also know you can go to sleep at night? That moral compass that you've decided on is going to guide you. What does that look like? If someone's out there thinking, either struggling with direction in a business or even wanting to get into business, What's some thoughts or some, some, some uh, experiences you've had in dealing with that? Yeah, you know, really for, for my wife and I, and I have to answer on behalf of her, even though she's not here because <laughs> two of us run this business. She just carries more of the weight, about 99%. <laughs> so 
what she says kind of goes, yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know, but we always work for our wives. Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't matter what percentage owner you are. I mean, it's just the reality of it. Right. Yeah. Um, but really for both her and I, it boils down to really just one word for us. And that's faith. Mm. Um, and it's, it's the faith that we both have and share uh, not only in each other, but then in, in, in God uh, himself, you know, and I know not every viewer or listener may have that same kind of, view or belief, and that's okay. But the bottom line is it boils down to having faith. You got to have faith in someone or something. And, you know, really um, within that faith is derived a purpose. And my wife and I understand what our purpose is. And if we've got a good firm foundation in our faith, and we know exactly what our purpose is, we can rest in those things, knowing that as long as we're doing everything that we believe we're called to do, then everything should take care of itself. And it's always happened that way. And so there's no need to have these restless nights of thinking, well, what about this or what about that? We have, we're so firmly rooted in our faith that it doesn't, the outside circumstances doesn't shake up the ground to take the roots out, right? The foundation is so strong for us in that respect. And not that we have it all figured out, right? Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. It does get a little shaky at times but we always come back to that root foundation of our faith. You, you said something that I think is very apropos to the time we're living in. And, and that statement you made was the, the things that are happening on the outside, the outside of our self circumstances don't shake the inner core and the inner being. And, and I, I think that's so applicable to what's happening. You know, so many people are, are, are really, and, and not that we shouldn't take value and care about politics and marketplace, and we should care about those things, but they should never become a prison. And that's, in a way, what you're saying is that whatever's happening on the outside, as, as good or bad as it gets, it doesn't matter, right? Right now, it could be a struggle, but even in the times of good, they, they still can't shake what's inside if we have that, you know, faith, however that's packaged. It's interesting. I had another interview last night and, uh, and, and the man that I interviewed, Mike Patchen, in his own words, he actually said the very same thing. And, and the, the, the packaging was a little different, but he said the exact same thing. And he said, you know, it all derives from how I can set up my spirituality and my faith. And I, I think when we have those conversations, I really believe people have that in common more than they think. It's just a matter of having that dialogue and conversation. Right. Yeah. And, and to be open too, if there's a difference, you know, my wife and I are Christians and if we're meeting somebody else, like through quad meets, which we'll get to, I've met people who have a, a Hindu or a Buddhist faith, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to go tell them you know, and, and preach to them mine over theirs, it's more or less having this open connectivity of love for them in helping be an influence to them. So that way they can, they can explore what their faith looks like and they can explore how deeply rooted it is and, and that sort of thing. I, I'm always going to be who I am and my wife is always going to be who she is in terms of our beliefs, you know, but just because we don't share the same belief doesn't mean we should isolate or we should condemn or we should just put somebody else aside. I, I just don't think that's the right thing to do uh, in that regard and respect. And again, that's why we can put our heads down at night and go to bed and sleep comfortably because we have this understanding of our moral compass is not only personal, but business. And it's all intertwined. Yes, you know, yes. They separate and have work-life balance. And it's like, listen, it's all intertwined. You cannot separate what it, you just can't no. <laughs> at all. No matter how much you want to believe you can separate it, it, it is all intertwined and it makes up the DNA and the, and the beings that we are. Yeah, everything is connected, right? Nothing is separate and everything is spiritual. And, you know, at some level, even the most shallow thinking person at some point in life recognizes everything is connected. Nothing, it, the ripple effect, <laughs> it's all connected. So yes. 100%. So you alluded to it, um, this whole Quad Meets thing. Uh, you're, you're the founder of Quad Meets. Tell, tell the people what that's all about. Yeah, so really, it's funny, Mitch. That's how we met was through Quad yes, Meets. It you is. Know what I mean? And so, so what is it? Uh, the easiest way I can explain it is it's a host like me, for example, 
in you meeting two other random people mm -hmm. across the world. So you pick a day and a time. You have no idea who's going to show up. You don't even know who the host is going to be. You just know I'm one of three participants. And then you get there, you show up via a video session like Zoom or Microsoft Teams or whatever technology we're using at the time. And quite frankly, it's just a, it's a networking opportunity for 30 minutes. It's to get to know what people do, how they make their money, right? We got to respect, we got to make money. So how do they make their money? And who do they know that we could potentially connect them with? Or how can we get to know them to where we can be a better referral partner potentially? And then it's just open networking to figure out how we can continue to support one another. I mean, that's it, uh, what it boils down to quad meets. And what's interesting is, you know, May 15th is where I hosted the very first one. We can get in the whole story about it if you want uh, as, as we go. But since May 15th, we've hosted a thousand, over a thousand meetings with quad meets, wow. over a thousand meetings. And there's been over 750 people across the globe that have attended at least one. Mm. Um, it's just cool, right? You know, it has nothing to do with promotional printing, mind you. Like, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I mean, right. you know, but the two are kind of tied together on, yes. okay, oh, oh, darn, no more networking opportunities. I can't go to these functions to meet people and shake hands. I can't go hand out my nuts. Uh, what do I do? I got to meet people, right? Uh, how do I meet people? Well, LinkedIn seems like a good platform. Uh, let's build a network. Okay, check, did that. Uh, but I don't really know these people. <laughs> right. no. They're just a connection. I see their posts in my feed. I comment every now and then, but I don't even know really what they look like. Do they really look like what their profile picture shows? <laughs> yes. Not yeah. the case most times, just saying, <laughs> <That's> right? <true. laughs> or it's close, you yeah. know. Uh, <laughs> that's funny in and of itself. <laughs> Um, you know, and so it's just like, let's be intentional. Let's connect with some people. Let's actually figure out how they make their money. Uh, cause it may not be that way or portrayed through LinkedIn. Um, so that, I mean, so that's quad meets like really at the 40,000 foot view. So two questions that leads to number one, um, people know it's a networking tool. We'll, we'll get into how to, how they can get connected within quad meets. But the biggest thing is, what does it cost? What does it cost someone to, to get into a quad meets, to check it out, to experience it? So for right now, nothing. Mm. It is free. Wow. So if, if someone's looking for a networking opportunity or, you know, for maybe they're on the job market, uh, maybe they're a sole entrepreneur, maybe they're a salesperson, maybe they're um, an executive at a company, maybe their recruiter. Um, I mean, the list just goes on and on and on and the types of people that I've met through quad meets, but th those are the people showing up and it is free and we don't want to hinder people from networking because we never know. I mean, during this time of year, you just, there's so many people unemployed and I, I just don't think it's right to charge somebody right now. Um, yeah. given the, given the fact that there are so many different economic, um, situations going on across the globe yeah. so i don't want to shut people out like other organizations will they just won't let people come to network if they don't pony up if you will um i just i just don't believe that's the right thing to do so yeah so it is free that that's that's amazing man um I, and i can attest uh for our listeners i that is how you and i met um a couple of months ago i guess in fact, I think my first quad meets, you you were the host, I think. I don't know. I, I was. I can actually, I, I could go look at the data as we're talking, mm -hmm. find out when you had your very first quad meets. You can give us the date, huh? Look yeah, at you. I, <laughs> I track it all. Um, so you have to, I got to track it all. So I could tell you, you, you personally have attended, uh, not including this week, you've attended 11 quad meets. Nice. Next. And um, your very first one was on June 10th. June, there we go. June 10th, there you go. That's the, the official date. June um, 10th. Yep, that was your very first one, June 10th. Yeah, and so I, I can attest to people the value, uh, number one. If, you, if you're listening uh, or, or watching us and you are just, for any reason, Ryan, you kind of listed a few of them, but if especially if you're looking to sink into networking, 
Um, this is such a great, since June, I've literally made friends throughout the world on, on just 11. Comparison to some people, that's hardly any at all. I'm pretty strategic with where I plan mine, but I, I literally, last week alone, had two one-on-one -on -one calls with guys that I've met. One's in Canada, one's in the UK, and we meet every other week and, you know, have become friends. And, and you and I talk quite a bit about that. And so the thing I love about it is it provides depth to the networking scene, if you allow it to. Um, now, obviously, the experience you get in return on your investment is, is up, up to you as, as someone wanting to in, you know, do any type of networking at all. But that kind of leads to my second question. And my second question is, we know it's free. We know it's available. We'll, we'll give you the website here in a minute. But how in the world, man, how in the world did you decide to start something like a quad meets what was that story that wasn't just something you woke up and did it has there has to be a journey it's, behind it it's pretty close it's pretty close <laughs> to just waking up and doing but uh there's not this huge elaborate story which i think is is really cool because it just goes to demonstrate that if you're if you're just in a place of of being open to mm -hmm. innovation then sometimes if, you're, if your mind's in the right place and you're kind of looking, like you could go, if you know that there's a penny out in the grass and you want to find that penny, you'll go look for that penny. But if that penny's out there and you don't even know it's out there, you're never going to spend the time looking for it. Mm -hmm. You stumble across it as you're walking through the grass, right? Mm -hmm. And it's this whole mindset. And my wife and I had been in this mindset of we got to pivot, we got to be, we have to stay innovative, we have to look for the next thing. So we had been very open to the idea and we had been exploring, even though some had failed, we could have said, you know what, we're, we're just not gonna try to innovate anymore, right? You know, and just stop and call it good. But it's like, no, we're, we're hard workers. We believe in what we're doing and we just can't sit there and wait. So we've got to do something. We've just got to keep trying. And so I literally had built up this network on LinkedIn from 2000 connections at the beginning of this year in 2020 to um, at the point in time quad meets had started i had about fourteen thousand connections mm -hmm. so a lot of growth and i really kind of stepped back and had this deep conviction of why am i not getting to know people a little bit more on linkedin and i'm literally scrolling through a feed and i came across this image like a screenshot of this person and like 40 or 50 people on a Zoom call, right? However many you can fit on a screen and they were talking about a networking thing. And I was like, I don't think that's efficient. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I've been to BNI groups and stuff before. And interestingly, I had been in one at that time and you carve out 90 minutes a week and you know, there's 40 or 50 people and each person gets 20 seconds, you know, to talk about what you do. And just like, and then, and then you, not only do you feel like you don't get to talk about everything, but then you, you don't even like once you know somebody and you get to know all the people there, then it's like, I'm going to connect with the people I connect with and the people I'm not connected with. I don't. And there's like this, there's not a newness, right. That right. comes to right. it. And so I was like, okay, what's a more efficient way to do this? Well, I could just meet with everybody one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> I mean, right. Like seriously. Hey, Hey, stranger. How about you and I, we just meet one-to-one -one and we set 30 minutes aside and let's just talk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, that's weird. It's going to be a sales pitch. There's all these things that kind of go through your head. And I was like, I, you know, that just feels icky to me. <laughs> right. you know, I, just, I don't know how I feel. So then I was like, well, what if it was like me and two people and there's like three on the call. And then I was like, you know what? like one person's not going to show and then you're going to have like this one-to-one -one. again you're one to one yep. weird because you're expecting the third person and they just didn't show up for whatever reason so i was like i'm gonna hedge my bet and i'm <laughs> gonna go with four and if we have four and one doesn't show you still have three and it's okay for a 30 minute networking time everybody gets seven and a half to ten minutes it's plenty of time to talk and figure out what they do and so that's really how the four came about. And literally on the first post, if you go look at it, I said, I'm going to call this a quad meet. Um, and then I added an S on the end because we couldn't get the domain quadmeet.com. So I added the S. <laughs> Predicated on the domain always. <laughs> you got it, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Exactly. So I was like, okay, that's what we're going to do is call it quad meets. And uh, I literally just threw my calendar out there using a Calendly link, set up rules. Like I said, you know what? I'm just going to throw out a post to my entire network and I'm going to set a rule in Calendly, which you can do. Um, and I said, I don't want to do four more of them a day. And this is the hours that I'm available to do these things. And I was like, I don't even know what's going to happen. Right. And then like I did a post and like from that post forward, like my schedule just filled up and I was like, what the heck? Like, people <laughs> schedule stuff for the next day. And I thought I didn't have things ready to go till Monday. So I was like waiting a week. Wow. And, boom, it, it literally like the first, and then I had like, of course, in the first meeting, only three people show, not four. And then I had, I had four meetings that day. One meeting didn't even happen because all four people or all three people bailed out, you know, and I'm like, I don't even know if this is going to work. And, but it just kept building momentum. And I ended up doing this post. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to pay it forward for these people that met with me. And I'm just going to talk about the experience and what they do. Mm. And, you know, just off the cuff, recap it. And like, people were like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. I want to connect with this person. And then people were like, oh, I made these new connections, you know? And I was like, oh, maybe there's something here. Let's kind of try it out. So it went to like 16 meetings a week for me, almost 17. And then now we're doing like 80 meetings a week. Yeah. Wow. So, so there's a little bit of the story. So nothing all fun and kind of, you know, there's a little bit of this keep your mind open. There's a little bit of the planning and strategy side of the buildup, you know, and just the thought process of my own experience of, okay, what feels good. And then there's just this off the cuff side, you know what I mean? It's just kind of a figure it out as you go. You don't need to worry about all the details. And I think Mitch, a lot of people miss things because yeah. they're so concerned yeah about all the details of the what could happen yes instead of like and i've just learned now in business like if you have an idea just start rolling with it mm -hmm. and start figuring out the details as you go because if you you get so consumed in the details it actually can discourage you from doing something because of the fear of what can happen not that I mean, you should acknowledge that stuff, but you should not let it be a driving factor on whether or not you decide to try something. Yeah, the greatest enemy of anything is perfection. And, and, and you do, you see that so many times people want perfection. Well, how is it going to end up? What's going to happen? It, you know, do you need to have some of your ducks in a row? Sure. Do you need to have all of them? Probably not, because you may have to be removing ducks at some point. <laughs> like... There's an adaptability and it's almost like perfection um, forces us to be you know, less adaptable because we just have this pressure on us. And it, it, every conversation I have with anyone who's either running a business or an entrepreneur, the same message is given. Nothing is going to be perfect. You have to just go and things kind of you know, come about as they may. And, and that's also the best way to learn what's gonna work and what's not if you never take action. If you would have never taken action on that idea you had with anything on anything about the little, you know, business in a box idea, you wouldn't have known. And you might be wasting time on expanding an idea that just wasn't going to work at that time. And so um, th there's an interesting thing. First of all, all that goes back to our word innovation, right? That the people that are innovating will always succeed. But it also kind of comes to this idea of leveraging social media. And I want to clarify leveraging, not from a standpoint of using people, but from a standpoint of positioning, whether it be in relationships or positioning your business. Um, share with us, Quad Needs is one example you've used to leverage social media. What are some other things that you've done? Maybe, maybe there's someone out there trying to grow their social media platform, trying to, you know, right now, more people are using social media and the virtual world to grow business because for some of them it's all they, they've got what are what are a few things you would give people that are thinking in those terms how do i leverage my platform how do i even grow my platform um, to get to a point that i can kind of make it a little more sustainable or a healthy spoke in the wheel of building a business yeah there's there's really there's really two words that come to mind for me, and that's authenticity and genuine. Mm. Two different words, right? I think. I'm pretty sure they are. We'll call them two different words, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that someone, someone may grammatically correct me and say, well, technically, Ryan, there's 
similar in their respect. Okay, fine. I'll let you have that. But for me, they mean two different things. You need to be authentic in what you're doing and you need to be genuine with people is how I would look at it. So um, that's really what it, what it boils down for me is if we were to dilute it all down and say, I need to have a really great social media presence or, hey, I just want to learn how to operate and run my business better, yeah. how to do it. You got to be authentic and you have to be genuine, right? And so be real authentic with your connections that are there and then be genuine in your responses in the way that you treat people. And so really it would be about just throwing yourself out there and taking the initiative to connect with people. Get, uh, right, you don't understand I'm an introvert. I'm really uncomfortable with going out and just saying hi to somebody. Yeah, you're right. It, I, I don't understand that. You're correct. Um, but here's what I will tell you is that if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, and you expect a different result, um, you're just going to go crazy. I mean, I think that is the definition of insanity as they kind of throw out there in the business world. And so you're going to have to do something different. And if you could just change that mindset to just being authentic and genuine with one person today, go out on a limb and just try to comment on one person's post and just see what happens. You know, and then maybe there's enough positive affirmation that comes back that encourages you to do two the next day or so on. And so I get it. It might be hard as an introvert, some people to build that network using social media or just in their business in general. But, you know, you're going to have to change and do something different to make that happen. Um, you can't you can't just sit back on your hands and expect something to happen without you participating in it. Engagement is the key, right? that you, you can't yes. just, you can't live non-existently in the world period, much less the virtual world. We'd uh, like to. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, we would just kind of float around, you know, but <laughs> there has to be that active engagement. Um, what, if you were to give someone one piece of advice, just, just because I personally knowing you and kind of <clears throat> knowing a little of your story and seeing what you've done on social media, what is your thought? I hear a lot of business owners, especially small business owners, taking advice from larger gargantuan kind of influencers and owners who are telling people, give stuff away for free, give stuff away for free, give stuff away for free, whether that be um, stuff being knowledge or resources or material product. And I get that to a point. Um, what would your thought be or advice to someone who's running a much smaller business or starting a business when, when maybe they're struggling with what does that look like giving things away for free, adding value? What are your thoughts on that? And what would maybe your advice be to someone in that position? You know, I, it's a good, that's a good question because, um, you know, free stuff works, right? But as a small business, you know, yeah, your time, you could give stuff away for your time, but there's still cost to that at the end of the day. You still, you still boils down to a dollar per hour that you make even as an owner. And you need to be able to extrapolate that just a little business advice for those who are actually running businesses and they're thinking, well, I don't really get paid hourly. No, you do. You have to take your total sales and then you find out whatever chunk of it is that you take out of it, whether it's distributions or whatever. Uh, personal benefits of paying bills through cell phones or vehicle, whatever that looks like, that's a dollar amount. You need to take all the sum of that and you need to divide that by the amount of time that you actually invest into your business and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And that is how much you're making per hour. And you need to look at things in that respect. Um, and that may help you decide what you are going to give away or how you are going to strategize in those things to be able to promote that. But really, that's where, that's where, and I, hate, I don't mean to plug this in here, Mitch, but that's where something like Quad Meets really comes into play because you're able to meet with, with people that are going to give you good advice and feedback. Maybe, like, I, I tell people all the time when they're trying to do their little 60 or 90 or two-minute uh, infomercial on what they do, if it sucks, like, I'm very... I will contact that person and say, hey, I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about your, your pitch or how you open things because I want to see you be successful. You know, so let's kind of break down how you came to it and why you talk about those things and that, and that sort. And so I'm giving away free services in that respect myself, yes. but it's all done going back to those two words, genuine and authentic, right? I'm being genuine and authentic with that connection. And it may come back to me. It may not. 
But that's one way I have learned to give back in terms of my skill set. And so if someone has more opportunities to network and talk to people, then they can actually go out and position themselves to have that opportunity of a free consultation. But you have to turn your mind and say, it's not really a free consultation. What I'm doing is a value add of services and it's now part of my sales process to try to win over a customer for the things that I do. And so I think it's a mindset shift of saying, I'm not necessarily giving away free stuff. It's let's take a step back and look at it from a sales process standpoint and say, what can I do to position myself and get this person in the sales cycle that could potentially lead to a customer down the road? So I don't know if that answers that question entirely. I may have gone in like seven different rabbit holes, um, but that's, that's where my head's at when I think of those things. Well, I actually think it answers the, the question perfectly because, you know, what, one thing I try and do internally and, and encourage other people to consider is there are a million different forms of currency. You know, so many times we narrow our thinking to currency means money in exchange for something or money in the bank or whatever. Currency comes in forms of, of what the example you just gave. Um, and, and, and currency comes in forms of referrals. Currency comes in forms of time investment. Currency comes in forms of gratitude or, you know, it, we could go on and on. And when we can open our mind to the idea that I'm not just looking for money in exchange for something. Yes, that's, that's the end game because we all need to, like you alluded to earlier, we all need to have responsibilities, take care of ourselves, take care of our families, take care of others. But at the same token, when we only focus on money as the one currency, we lose track of other forms of currency that eventually get us to the exchange of money as currency. And, and I think that's really, in a nutshell, what you're talking about is adding that value however you can and knowing that that is a form of currency and that will over time. I had this happen to me the other day. I'm actually a guy I met on Quad Meets. And... Uh, I've been doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching with him to help pivot into something, one of his passions. Man, he gave me one of the greatest forms of currency the other day, because I'm not charging him any money right now. I'm trying to help him out. And that was, he, he tagged me on a, on a LinkedIn uh, comment, and he actually, the words he said, I told him, I said, that's going to become my new tagline for my personal development coaching. That was one of the greatest forms of currency I could have taken in that moment in time. And it was just I never thought of that angle before and he did. And I was like, that's better than the hundred bucks you could have paid me. <laughs> well, think about how much it would have cost you to go to a marketing or branding. Yes. And said, I need a tagline. You would have been out thousands of dollars to come up with a tagline like that. Yes. Yes. And I got it for the exchange of helping him and empowering him to move forward. And so I, I really think that advice you've given is so valuable to people to be engaged on social media. Don't just float around hopelessly wishing um, to be innovative and to take opportunities like quad meets. Um, you know, I wanted to say one thing about quad meets before we really jump into it for a few minutes. If you are trying to practice your elevator speech or your tagline or whatever you want to call it, that is a great forum to do it because it's a compassionate forum. And it's a graceful form. And I've even within myself from, from June 13th or whatever, <laughs> getting, June to, 10th. June 10th, getting to practice <laughs> it a few times and it's reshaped. And I've thought about things a little differently and you can kind of watch people's reactions and you can say it one way one day and no one says anything, shape it a little differently the next time. And people are like, Ooh, what is that? Well, that's just a, it's a great way to practice. Yeah, and you kind of alluded to this, um, I, I'm going to call it quad nation or the community, kind of the forum, is what's really, it, what's really cool about individuals, mostly, you got to throw out the caveat, mostly, yes. most of the individuals with quad meets, um, they are very compassionate and there's this, there's this servant leadership kind of theme that flows through a lot of people who attend and there, it's this helpfulness that they want to have. So, um, people are very open and they understand that this is a process and evolution. And, you know, they, they, if somebody like messes up or is really quiet or whatever, fine. You know what I mean? It's like no big deal. We're here to support you. I mean, we've literally had quad meet session where they found out somebody was unemployed and they were actually getting ready to have an interview that afternoon 
I don't know if you've heard this, Mitch, in, in some of the post write-ups, but all three of the participants started prepping that person for their interview. Like, who does that? You know what I mean? Like, they were asking questions and, hey, well, what about this? Like, they were really trying to, to like, psych them up and get them really prepped for that interview in, I mean, all during that 30 minutes. I mean, that's really, really powerful to me that individuals would set their whole agenda aside and say, hey, let's, let's help you. But that's kind of the overarching theme that you find throughout every single quad meets that has attended. I'm sure there's been a few that I'm not aware of or been on that maybe, maybe didn't fit that. But at the end of the day, uh, that's, that's, what we, that's what we see. Um, so it's cool. Yeah, interestingly enough, I've been on another quad meets that was very similar to that, uh, same type of situation. A uh, person looking to transition, going through interview process, and that kind of became the the uh, topic of the day. And and that's and, and I do I I think most of the time that's what they look like. <laughs> most of yeah, the time. most of the time. Well, you you myself and Christian uh, uh, Christian Kep is it? I think you Clep, pronounce but uh -huh. Klepp out in uh, Canada. Mm -hmm. and I forget who the fourth person was with us, but man, we just had such an awesome discussion about, you know, the indigenous people of our countries. Yes. I mean, it was just, it was so special to me. I'll always remember it uh, because it was just, it was people having this real, real passionate discussion, you know, of, of things that were just important to the four of us. You know what I mean? You could have had somebody else there and it wouldn't have been important to them and it, it may have gone somewhere completely different. But just for the four of us that were there, it was this really authentic and genuine dialogue uh, of something that was so uh, just so unique to us. Um, it was it was really cool. Yeah, it, that that was a, a really amazing, well, probably my favorite episode that that we've had, honestly, um, that I've been on, that I've experienced. So um, let's start kind of moving forward and, and wrapping up our conversation. Ryan, tell us where folks can uh, hop on a quad meets, where they can find out more information about it. Maybe someone's still like, ah, I want to find out more background about what's going on. Tell us where they can go. Yeah, so there's two, way, two places you can go. Uh, both of them happen to be online. They're just different avenues. So you can always go to quadmeets.com. So Q-U-A-D-M-E-E-T-S. Dot com. So that's one avenue. And then the next avenue is through the LinkedIn business page. Uh, and you can just do a search for quad meets on the LinkedIn business page. Uh, I'm not sure if I cut out there at all. My screen got a little bit choppy. Um, but no, so you're good. We got all that. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, hashtag quad meets is another way um, can find uh, information and, and all the posts that are related to quad meets on LinkedIn. And tell us a little bit more for folks that may want to look into anything on anything. Um, yeah. What, so what, we do, type, what type of person would, would want to find you and then where to find you? We, we do uh, work nationwide. Um, so we're not just constrained to the great state of the barbecue capital of the world, Kansas City, as I call it. Uh, so we're just not here, but we do go across the country um, and we primarily work with businesses that are looking for tangible or swag items, branded merch, uh, as others may call it. Um, and so they can go to anythingononything.com. I know it's a little long, but just remember. That'd be a, that'd be a great, great way to, to visit us. And then you can always uh, and connect with me on LinkedIn as well. Um, you can just do a search for Ryan Christopher and I should come up. It'll say quad meets founder on there and you can always connect with me via LinkedIn too. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. So go to anything on anything. If you were looking for some type of swag, promotional items, um, I was actually scrolling your website before the show and during the show. And, <laughs> and you guys are well equipped to, to do anything like print on nuts. And so, uh, Maybe someone can steal your idea or expound on it and, and uh, do their own thing. Yeah, I mean, from t-shirts to apparel items to corporate stores and pens and notebooks and tumblers and coffee mugs. And we've got about a million products that we could potentially print on. I love it. I love it. 
Um, and make sure you check out quadmeets.com, friends. If you're on LinkedIn, uh, look up the hashtag quadmeets and you can follow that. If you are not on LinkedIn, I'm actually, I'm actually going to give LinkedIn a little bit of a plug. Uh, for me, it has been a much more advantageous platform over the last five or six months than any other social media platform from a business perspective. And so because of things like quad meets, et cetera. Um, so yeah, if you're not on LinkedIn, go check that out. Okay, Ryan, I've got five questions, kind of a lightning round that I ask every <laughs> guest. One word answers only, and uh -oh. none of them have to do with barbecue. Well, actually, you could give barbecue as one of your answers on one of them. Okay, well, we might as well just chalk that one up then. So help, <laughs> helping you out there, brother. <laughs> All right. Uh, regarding I think books, it's a compound word. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, regarding books, do you prefer digital or paper? Audio. Audio. Okay. We'll we'll call it we'll call that digital. We'll let that fall in the digital realm. Um, okay. co coffee or tea? Neither. You're not the only one that said that, so you're doing good. <laughs> uh, here's the one you could use your favorite food for. A guilt, what's your guilty pleasure in life? Chocolate. I, <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to go there. <laughs> um, one thing that you cannot live without? Family. Ah, good. A lot of guests say that. That's awesome. And your favorite season of the year, fall, winter, spring, summer? Spring. Spring. Yep. Awesome. I love it. Change, changing colors and March Madness. Hopefully we have one this year. <laughs> Hopefully we have it some. It was March canceled Madness. last year. Ah, yeah. Man. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't get into that. You and I have uh, another commonality and that's coaching basketball at some point in our lifetime. And we both. Yes. And, um, yep. Maybe, maybe uh, next time we have you on, we'll get into our love of sports it, and basketball, especially. As long as your viewers want me back, I'll come back. You know, I love it. up to them. I love it. Hey, Ryan, um, what do you want to leave the people with? I always like to have our guests, especially during, it's, it's been interesting. You know, the show has kind of morphed from, I love, I love hearing the human story and just encouraging people that way. Over the last couple of months, it's kind of morphed into really encouraging people. And so at the end of the show, I like to ask, what, what would you want to leave with the people um, to kind of inspire them and give them some hope? Uh, you know, I think it was kind of a theme throughout our uh, entire time, and that was the, uh, the innovation, mm -hmm. continuing to stay innovative. And then the other thing I would say is just have faith, ah. you know, um, th those two things, is be innovative and have faith. And I think if people can do that, um, they're going to be in a much better situation uh, now and in the future than, than they were in the past. Yeah, I love it. Innovation and faith. Those are two qualities that, that will not lead you wrong. So Ryan, this has been great, brother. Thank you so much for coming on the show. If you'll hang on for a second, you and I will close things out. Brothers and sisters, thank you for listening to the Mitch Gray Show. Once again, please subscribe to our podcast. We're available on most pod podcasting platforms. Uh, I do want to let you know that we are in the future going to be expanding the platforms that our show is offered on. Make sure you listen, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mitch Gray Media on YouTube, so you can find the video formats. Follow us on social media at M Gray Media. If you want to follow me on LinkedIn, just look up Mitch Gray, G-R-A-Y, and you'll see my, uh, I think, honest picture on my profile. I think it's pretty close to reality. So <laughs> um, make sure you follow us where you can. Uh, friends, we hope that your life is full of peace. And right now, and if you are struggling with anything, as we do often on the Mitch Gray Show, we want to encourage you to reach out. I love having guests on the show that are open to supporting others. And I know Ryan is one of those people as well. So if you have any other questions about, about anything we talked about today, make sure you reach out to Ryan or I, and we would be glad to support you any way we can. Have a great day, and we will talk to you next week.